Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and to a video on the recent firmware update Garmin have released for their Edge X40 series. Those being the 540, 840 and 1040 plus the solar variants of those units with firmware version 20.19 rolling out this week over a number of days. So if you don't have this update just yet, it may be coming to your unit very shortly. Now these updates will take place automatically. If you have one of these units connected to your phone, connected to your home Wi-Fi, or if you do a sync via Garmin Express to Mac or PC. Now pulling up the change log just here, quite a few things to go through, two additions and about 20 or so bug fixes. Indicating to me that these units are now reaching a nice cruising altitude of features. And Garmin are now spending time just, oi, quieting down. Uh, shh. Garmin are spending time just polishing the rough edges on a few things these units do. Okay, let's kick things off with added Nav IC support. What's Nav IC? Personally, I had absolutely no idea. Doing some research, turns out it is the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, also known as IRNSS, or as Garmin are calling it, Nav IC. So navigation with Indian constellation. The Nav IC coverage obviously covers India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, a lot of China, also reaching as far as Madagascar, if you're doing a few laps of the island there, and also the remote west coast of Australia. Now Nav IC is automatically added to these units. It's not selectable, you can't enable or disable it, it's just enabled. If you have, and I'll pull up here on screen, we go over to GPS, uh, that best accuracy selected, which is multi-GNSS, multi-band, or balanced, which is multi-GNSS. Clicking on the I at the top there, there's a little bit more information there about what constellations are supported for the multi-GNSS multi-band modes. That's GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Baidu, QZSS, and now Nav IC, and multi-band on those, so dual frequency. With multi-GNSS, I believe which is one single frequency to those constellations, you have GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Baidu, QZSS, and Nav IC. So the same as above, but with just one frequency. GPS is obviously just GPS. Now, as I said, they're not selectable. You can't choose which one, it's just automatic. But Nav IC is now there. The second feature added lists to here on the changelog, added keyboard suggestions to the location search feature. All right, we'll scroll down to navigation. We'll hit search and I'm doing my best to guess what this means. <laughs> it wants me to start the activity. We'll hit search for coffee. This thing really wants coffee, C, O, Oh, where's the QWERTY? FF. Sebastian's Coffee. Okay, so it's come up there with a, a suggestion. I click down. Is there any more coffee shops suggested? Oh, there's two. Steam Coffee, Ballarat. Let's go to Steam Coffee, which now comes up on the map as being in that direction. No, wait, that direction. It just changed on me. I'm indoors. It's going to be a bit screwy. Okay, so that I believe that's what keyboard suggestions, the location search feature is all about. That covers off the two additional features added with 20.19. Let's quickly go through the fixes here, because quite a few of them, quite a few of them are very vague, and a number of them that I've experienced myself, so it's good to see these in the list. Fixed crash in extended display mode when executing a workout. Extended display mode, if you're not aware, if I've got an Apple Watch on, if you've got a Garmin watch and are recording a multi-sport workout, run, ride, swim, etc., on the unit, you can have these units act as an extended display. So if you're doing a workout on your watch, fix an issue with that. The shush, tones, settings, System, tones. Okay, there's a quick tip on how to stop that from beeping. Next up is fixed writing free climb category, so it displays correctly in Garmin Connect. Now when you're out riding and Climb Pro Free Ride kicks in and detects a climb that you're going up, it will save that climb into the activity file, and you can view that later on within Garmin Connect. This is identical when using a route or route which has all the climbs predefined. Once you've completed those climbs or completed that route and saved the activity down, you can go over to Garmin Connect and have a look at all the climbs. So they've obviously done some fixing there for writing those free ride climbs to review them in Garmin Connect. Fix a crash for long distance rides. The distance isn't determined there. Fixed point of interest search for conflicts in the map data. Fixed auto pause resetting smart trainer resistance during workouts. If you're not aware, these units can be used to fully control your smart trainer. You can do ride simulations of rides you've done outdoors, indoors on your indoor trainer. You can use erg mode, do workouts, etc. Fix light network battery status icons for components with an external power source. I guess that's one for bike packers or long distance endurance riders who have their lights plugged into an external power source. Hit the disconnected radar icon when in an indoor activity profile. Now I use Garmin Edge units on a daily basis, both indoors and out. I'm sure I've seen this update somewhere before, maybe in a previous life or in a previous revision. I'm not quite sure, but that radar icon does pop up every now and then when I'm indoors. Again. 
Hopefully they've fixed this one. Uh, the next line here is a duplicate of the line above. Maybe time to double check your uh, change logs. Fix an issue with pairing multiple BLE sensors. Personally, I don't pair anything via BLE to my edge units. Everything's over Ant Plus. Fix a crash when connecting to the RCT715, this little nugget here, which is Garmin's radar slash camera device. Fix live segments updating during activities. Fix the resume navigation feature after diverging from a course. This one got me in Adelaide this year. Spending some time riding over in Adelaide. I've got some routes that I've had on this unit. And rolling back in after a hard ride in the hills. Wanted to take me left up a hill and then right down a hill. Or alternatively, I could have just kept riding straight. So I kept riding straight. I paused navigation so it stopped trying to reroute me. And as I rejoined that course on the triangle, I couldn't resume navigation, so that was reported, has been fixed in this firmware. Good stuff. Fixed truncation of creation date for courses in the dynamic glance area. Fixed refresh of mobile notifications page. Mobile notifications here on screen, pull down, scroll, 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 notifications page right there. Next two are related to Climb Pro. Fixed Climb Pro behavior on bridges and through tunnels. That's always a struggle for Climb Pro. Bridges and tunnels aren't naturally occurring, and the climb detection is only as good as the underlying base maps or the route file that has been provided to follow. Now, I don't have any high bridges here or lengthy tunnels to test that, so I'll take their word for it. Next one for the Climb Pro here is fixed climb detection on branches with loops. No, not those kind of branches. I'm assuming these kind of branches, forks in the road. Okay, we're almost at the end. Clarified whether the source of an automatically detected maximum heart rate was from directly measured values or estimated from the user's activity history. I'm not quite sure where this one would be on the edge units. Let me guess by going to menu here, my stats, we'll go down to training zones, heart rate zones, and maximum there, I have a maximum of 190 BPM and it says auto detect is turned on. I can set the value, but auto detect is obviously toggled on, as you can see there. I'm assuming that's what that's about. Best I can find, anyway. Alrighty, fix elevation plot overlap with map while zooming. Second last one, fix displaying emojis in startup.txt file. This one had me stumped a while ago. Now, originally when the X40 series came out, the startup.txt, which I have a whole video on, I'll link to in the video description below, allowed displaying of emojis. Now, just Quickly rewinding, startup.txt allows you to display some text when you're first booting up a unit, such as your name, maybe your phone number, email address. So in the event you do lose your device, someone might be able to get it back to you. Now early on, these did support startup.txt with emojis, and then for a few months there, I didn't notice it for a while, but the startup.txt wasn't displaying at all. About 45 minutes to an hour of mucking around, removing characters, adding characters, I thought it might have been tabs or spaces or something. No, it was the emoji was actually screwing up and not displaying the startup the text at all. Again, the support ticket was in, uh, description was in, and now we see it hit production firmware. Good stuff. And finally on the list, fix other minor issues and improve device stability, the uh, generic catch-all that seems to be always at the bottom of change logs. Anyhow, there it is, my best interpretation of what I can figure out from the information being supplied here from Garmin with 20.19 firmware on their X40 series. If you're the owner of one of these units and have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be across more videos just like this one on this channel, and I'm off for a ride. See you later.